Good morning, Asif. Thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, you were on uh, the first panel of the session of the day. It was quite an animated debate, uh, uh, talking about new strategies in FX, how to optimize your trading desk in those markets. That's right. Uh, perhaps if we start off by you telling us a little bit more about um, well, what you're doing in the uh, FX and algo execution space. Sure. I mean, uh, we're sort of uh, introducing a new product into the marketplace, uh, and especially in the execution algorithm business. Uh, so we, we've been, over the last few years, seen an evolution of how people would like to execute in, uh, in foreign exchange. And we're sort of now sort of entering the marketplace to uh, provide more sophisticated tools to our clients so they can get a much better quality of execution when they're sort of transacting sort of large size orders into the marketplace. Um, and certainly with the, the, the evolution of execution algorithms in foreign exchange, we're seeing that uh, the market is actually now looking for something a lot more sophisticated as we've seen uh, our FX markets become a lot more challenging in terms of liquidity being a lot more fragmented, transparency being so weak in this marketplace. So really clients are becoming a lot more sophisticated themselves and they're having more scrutiny on the quality of execution they get. And we believe that execution algorithms is one of those products that can help them solve those problems. So you're finding now they actually want to take a much more active role as, as clients in exactly how their trading is, is executed? Absolutely. So if you look at traditional trading mechanisms, we've seen clients typically had access to trading over voice where they pass the risk over to the bank. Or more recently now clients are getting more involved with electronic trading where they see a price on the screen and they trade. But when it comes to trading large size transactions, typically clients have been taking control of themselves in the sense that they're breaking the order up and dealing with multiple banks, but they're finding issues with how information gets leaked into the markets and they see sometimes the markets move against them. So what we're doing now is basically writing very sophisticated execution algorithms which can intelligently trade markets and consume liquidity without creating too much noise in the marketplace. And what clients like to see in that is that they actually want to be in control of that execution. They want to be the guys who decide I want to put an algo execution order in now because I think the market's poised for the, the current conditions to work for that type of order. So are you finding then to, to some degree that, the, that your clients are, without trying to sound too glib about it, are actually kind of smarter in, the, in as much as they're taking more of an interest in the trade itself, they really analyse what they're doing and it's much more than just saying, go ahead and make me money. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, a lot of clients, uh, when they first hear about the execution algorithms and the algo trading world, they kind of get a bit withdrawn and a little scared about the whole topic because they think it's that these algos are designed to actually replace them as, a, as, a, as traders. It's quite the contrary, it's quite the opposite actually because what we're actually doing is looking at the execution algorithms as a very sophisticated tool that we're giving access to our, our clients to. So clients will still need to make the decision of when to enter the market and when to execute the trade. But we're definitely, to answer your question, is that we're seeing uh, our clients become a lot more sophisticated in analysing the details post-trade. And we at BNB Paribas pride ourselves of giving the, the most sophisticated transparency and, in terms of uh, post-trade details in the sense that after every execution we'll provide clients with a full breakdown of how the execution went, how it worked in their favour, a breakdown to a trade-by-trade -trade level in, by giving timestamps. And what that actually does is it gives the clients the ability to actually turn around to BNB Paribas and say, actually prove it, prove that you, you did trade on that exchange at that particular price and prove to me that was the best price in the exchange. And that's, and that's where the market's going. You find clients becoming a lot more um, involved in their trading and execution needs and they're becoming a lot more sophisticated. And talking best price, actually, that was one of the, the, the big talking points, the, the idea of, um, of it's at, um, excuse me, single, de single dealer platforms and multi-dealer platforms and, uh, and sort yeah. of either or option. Uh, why is it an either or option? One would assume that if you're using a multi-dealer platform, there's no reason why it shouldn't just be better because it's dealing with more. It's a tough one because, I mean, obviously, multi-dealer platforms, obviously, some clients have to be forced to basically use these platforms because of the best execution policy they have in-house, which mandates that they have to look at three or four different prices before trading and hitting the best price on the exchange. Now, the multi-dealer platforms lend themselves while providing that service to our clients. The challenge for us banks is that when we, when we provide pricing into the multi-dealer platforms, we are only, only able to provide a finite set of pricing. So we provide, we try to provide a best pricing, but at the same time we have to be protective against those clients which are a lot more malicious and a lot more dangerous to deal with, and have high alpha in the flow which cost the bank money. So what you actually find is that when we push, push our prices to the multi-dealer platforms, we're trying to provide a neutral price to basically make sure that we have a price that works for all our clients. Whereas on a single dealer platform, we can actually take that one step further. Now that we have clients and we understand their trading habits, we know their, what type of client base they are, we can actually provide them bespoke pricing so that we can give them the best possible pricing experience so they can get the best price from BNB Paribas. 
But for those clients who are difficult, we can protect ourselves and provide a slightly wider pricing stream. So really with the single dealer platform, it enables us to really look at clients and provide, go push the envelope out and give them a much better pricing experience than trade on a multi-dealer platform. But it comes down to then, what do clients do? Do clients have several single dealer platforms on their screen or do they go for this consolidated multi-dealer platform? And these are some of the challenges we're trying to work with in the marketplace. Indeed, I can, I can, I can imagine, if it doesn't already exist, that, that, that someone will come up with a, with a software workaround that works as a, an aggregator of single dealer platforms rather than Correct. a multi-platform. It's inevitable, it's over yeah. time, right? So it, the, the, the banks are obviously trying to now provide, I think we're getting to a stage where the electronic market's ev evolving at a rate where banks are now looking at, um, have a mechanism to provide an edge uh, in a client taking a single dealer platform. So like for example, we at BB Paribas provide uh, our platform called Cortex FX, which provides a very rich way of trading for an exchange. We provide the client's ability to trade spot FX, forwards, uh, options, and we've tried to basically give clients access to their execution algorithms through our platform as well. So the IX being an intelligent execution al algorithmic trading platform, you know, clients are actually looking at our um, single dealer platform as just as an access point for our algos as well. So the, the, we're seeing that we've uh, to try and push single dealer platforms onto clients' uh, desktops. That we do have to go that one step further and provide that extra value add. So there was just one last thing I wanted to ask you because we are quite short of time. Yeah, you sure. were talking about um, what was the, the, the specific title? Uh, Mirage orders. Yeah. Mirage liquidity. Yeah, yeah mirage liquidity. At, yeah. In fact, if you could explain a little bit more about yeah, that, sure. not just how that works, but how you managed to identify it and um, avoid that factoring into your, your pricing. So it's more used, so the, the, the factor of looking at mirage liquidity is more factored into your execution algorithms, so how well they get execute across the markets. The basic problem of mirage liquidity is when we look at the FX marketplace today, we see that liquidity is fragmented across various different ECNs and electronic channels. So if you look at a human trader perspective, if he's trying to price an order for 100 million euro dollars, he, it's very difficult for him to quickly look across all those marketplaces and come up with a significant price. And this is where algorithms and electronic trading helps in that, solve that problem. But now the problem is, is that because of the lack of regulation in FX markets um, and the nature of being OTC, you get a lot of what we call mirage liquidity, where it's the same liquidity posted on several exchanges. So whereas you actually look at the, the, the landscape and you say, actually, I can see 100 million euros and this is what I think my price is. In actual fact, that's the real price for about 50 million euros because it's the same liquidity posted on several exchanges. So when a trader tries to consume that liquidity and get such a poor fill ratio, the client then gets a bad deal at the back of the trade. What we're doing with execution algorithms is that execution algorithms are able to learn as they trade these marketplaces. So if, if it hits an exchange where the liquidity is not really there, it will learn from that and basically not trade on that exchange for the next for the, for the next for the next trade. And then basically working towards more reliable exchanges where the liquidity is more guaranteed. So we have what we call adaptive technology in our algorithms which are able to learn from the marketplace and then have smart order routed to basically hit the correct marketplace to consume the liquidity and have a real idea and depth of field where the market actually is. And that's what our clients are really looking for now, looking for more sophisticated technology to be a bit more clever in how they analyse the liquidity in the marketplace. So. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. We are unfortunately um, out of time for now, That's but of course, okay. people might well want to find out more. Obviously, I assume it'll be on the, the BNP Paribas website. Absolutely, yep. What yep. specific? Where specifically should they be looking? So, there's a, we have a website called uh, cortex.bnpparibas.com. Uh, so, you know, clients can go from there and find information on both our FX trading platform, but as well as our. Uh, intelligent execution, our new uh, execution algorithm business. Fantastic, thank you very much. Thank you.